Today's topics are a new version of Flutter and Dart, Flutter Vikings in Oslo, we have Sep.run, a new competitor for CodePen, and last but not least we want to talk about the Flame Game Jam in 2022. And now my name is Max and this are the Flutter News. All right, so let's talk about Dart 2.18. Michael Thompson created here a fantastic article to explain us what changes has been coming into it. And let's jump directly into it. So introducing of Dart, Objective-C and Swift Interop. What does Interop mean? Well, we want to talk directly with the platform underneath of it. And thanks to the Dart Foreign Function Interface or short FFI, we have now the possibility to access these um, methods and objects on the platform itself. What does that mean? Well, he gives a very nice example of the time zone. And here he provides us an Objective-C example of a main function, auto-release pool. And here he wants to access the NS time zone object and wants to read out of it the offset and the name of the time zone, which works perfectly in Objective-C. But we want to do it with Dart, right? So what can we do? Well, we can create a project. And in this project, we define in the pubspec.yaml some specific things, like for example, the name, that will be the name of the object that we call in Dart, what language we want to convert from, then a file where we bind our things into it. So this is an auto-generated file at the end where we get our um, yeah, foundation bindings in this case. Then we have uh, which interfaces we want to include and where this interface resides. So in this case, it's in command line tools, macOS, NS time zones, H. And with that, we can run the FFI gen and the FFI gen will generate us some the foundation bindings.dart. And as you can see now, he provides the, the uh, lib path to the uh, foundation completely. And what you can see is the time zone library is the name that we defined up here. And inside of it, we access the dynamic lib uh, open with the path. And with that, we can now call this methods as it would be a Dart method. As you can see, we call time zone and as time zone get local time zone and pass in the library. And that's it. With that, we can now as a Dart developer access the information from the Objective C or Swift code. Pretty cool, right? So there is a whole interoperability guide that I can highly recommend and you will find it down in the video description. Great. Platform specific HTTP libraries. On top of the knowledge that we have now with the FFI, well, the Dart team thought, hmm, let's create a separate package for the HTTP. Why is this the case? Well, if you want to have platform specific things like Wi Fi networking only or VPN access, then the HTTP package was maybe not sophisticated, so it was not able to do it. And with that new Cupertino HTTP, we are now able to directly use these benefits from the platform HTTP package. So they created also a short example of that. So they create a client. Uh, it's just an HTTP client. And if it is um, no iOS or um, macOS, then it will use a normal client from the HTTP class. But if there is, then you can pass in different configuration and you use the platform specific client in this case. And then at the end, you can just use it as any other client that you would use. And with that, you have a real big benefit to get your data downloaded when you need it and you make your customers more happy with that. There are two packages for that, Cupertino HTTP and the Cronet HTTP. Improved type inference. Another additional feature or it's very underneath the hood and probably you don't necessarily see it directly. But what now is possible? It to infers the types even better. What does that mean? In null safety, we had one issue. If you think about the fold function, for example, we can see that we had to pass in the integers once more, even though that the list of numbers already set us that this is not null. So if we would uh, try to do something like this, we needed to enforce that X and Y is an integer with an exclamation mark or by saying in front it's an integer. And to avoid these errors, now we are able to use this this in the version 3.3 or uh, 2.18 and we are able to directly fold these methods. That means we have even stronger type system all on null safe which is pretty great. All right, async performance improvements. Well, 
In this version, the async, async star and sync star has been improved. And according to Michael, there was a reduction of AOT compila uh, compilation snapshots from 10% and the performance uh, increased inside of the micro benchmarks. For us, that means if we use async um, create streams with async star or sync star, then we have smaller boilerplate for our Flutter application at the end. And the great thing is also that the performance is faster in general. Great. Then there are some improvements in the pub.dev space, and one of them is this find, uh, funding stuff. So we are now able to uh, pass in as package maintainers a link to a website where we can donate something. And this is pretty cool because most of the projects will need some money. And I really like that, that we can now easily see the, how we can support. Also, there are two points that are able to give um, as these Flutter points or package points um, for each package that uses an OZ approved license. And with that, open source is getting uh, yeah, supported because that means, uh, for example, MIT license or Apache 2.0 license things like that will be well pushed a little bit but with a lot of changes there comes also a lot of breaking changes in this case it's not very hard because some of them are in my opinion pretty obvious in the long run like dart 2js a dart analyzer has been changed to dart compile js and dart analyze should be fairly simple whoever uses a, a, a terminal script or something will be easily changing that but it's good to know then there are some changes in the package config json i think that's fine mixins of class that don't extend object can't be used well here be careful because i can imagine that some people did that um very interesting fix uh, really happy that this is inside good uh then yeah uri package has some nullable change that means there is a question mark inside um yeah just check it and we have some naming change in the dart ios uh for Screaming Snake to lower camel case. Yeah, and the Dart VM um, has changes the STRDN in line mode and echo mode, which is fine and shouldn't be a problem at all. Um, if you are using that, check it out. Um, yeah, just make sure that you are not uh, directly uh, attached to these problems. Then null safety update. And I find that very interesting because, um, yeah, Michael announces here some very interesting insights. For example, 100% of the top 250 packages. And I think that was already the last time the case. I'm really happy with that. 89% um, of uh, the top 1000 are now sound null safe, which is pretty darn good. And with these two uh, very good uh, um, yeah, visibilities, and as you can see, we increase the sound null safety, we decrease the uncertainty, sounds and with that um, he improved the roadmap and what he says is well not uh, to be unsound and sound null safety so to have both possibilities creates overhead and complexity as you can imagine you have to update all the time the um, yeah the migration path you have to make sure that everything works and all of that well costs resources at the end and that is a problem so what he's saying is because most of the people are anyway going to the path of um, null safety the support for non null safety so for uh, unsound null safety will be dropping by mid 23 so you still have more than a year and until then it will be that it could be that yeah, un unsound null safety is not a choice more in Dart and Flutter. Cool, that's that. I think it's amazing what the team has done in 2.18. And let's switch now to Flutter. Tim Sneef was creating an article about uh, announcing Flutter 3.3. And very interesting here is, well, the announcement, of course, for 3.3 and 2.18. But uh, the Vendorous new reference app from G Skinner, very good. We can use this apps always as an understanding because the source code is open. So you, if you want to improve your skills, check out the Skinner apps. They are so good. For, really, you can learn a lot. But what I found most interesting is the Impeller, our new graphics engine. Well, you probably heard of that Skia is our, well, engine that we are using, but uh, it has some problems with the newer versions uh, from Metal and Vulkan, like the things that are running on the devices. And now with the new Impeller framework, we have the possibility to remove a lot of jank, make it way more smooth. Uh, he calls about butter smooth somewhere, silky smooth even. Yeah, and so it is uh, very, very great to have that finally, because this will be a new game changer for Flutter, I guess. Um, 
Just make sure if you want to use it, this is just at the moment available for the early adapter preview, which means you have to enable a flag and it will be only available on the master channel of Flutter. All right. Um, yeah, also he says goodbye to Eric Seidel, one of the co-founders of Flutter. Uh, very sad to see you leave, but good job uh, and good luck on your next journeys. Great. If we are switching over, Kevin Jamal Shisholm was creating a fantastic article about Flutter Free Free with all the changes that are in there. And as you can see, Flutter has merged over 5,600 MRs uh, in the meantime, which is ridiculous much of work and so you can imagine that this changelog is just a small part of all the things that has been done but what i really like is the selectable area and let's start directly with that you can surround now text areas and uh, yeah also the whole app if you want uh, to make your app selectable and as you can see you can select now the three different rows and if he goes up that is because the scaffold is selectable. You can see that even the headline is now selectable. That's pretty cool because, well, for apps like macOS apps and things like that, if you can't select things, it's always a little bit of a hassle. Then we have trackpad input, uh, which is pretty cool because now we have the, uh, more tools to dif uh, differentiate about trackpad using. Like if you scroll on a trackpad, now you have the possibility to also understand drag and drop and things like that and get more events on top of that, which makes the whole work with the trackpad a lot more convenient. And there are a lot of MRs that has been merged. If you are interested, check it out. You will find it down in the video description. Then we have Scribble. I really like that. I don't have an Apple Pencil, unfortunately. I would like to test that. But inside of Cupertino text field, text field and editable text, it seems now possible um, and upgradable that we can use the Apple Pencil to write inside of the fields and directly getting it converted into real text inside of Flutter. Pretty cool, I think. Then there is some upgrade in the text input where we get way more um, events triggered, where you can read a lot of more what happens inside. That will be more important for people who are working directly in the Flutter ecosystem, um, but it will help us a lot to improve the text inputs even further. Then there is upgrade to material design free. Well, for everyone, you can check out the different graphics. It looks so beautiful, I think, and it works and uh, yeah. We have to test that out, how it works, and uh, I think we will have more and more improvements in the future. Then for desktop applications, Windows desktop application version is now part of the pubspec.yaml, which is very interesting because if you wanted to have something like an auto updater, it was very challenging to update the versions correctly. You needed to do that in Visual Studio. And with that now, you have the possibility to put that in the pubspec.yaml. So if you deploy your Windows apps to a Windows the Windows Store, for example, you can update it now way easier without leaving the Flutter ecosystem, which is pretty cool. If you remember some years ago, <laughs> Uh, one year ago, actually, I created a, pay a video about navigation and what happened there and what is the current state. And the Flutter team was always pretty unhappy with the release of uh, Navigator 2.0 and I think everyone else too, because it was way too complex to use. So they created um, a research team how to make it better and checked out different packages. And it seems that none of the packages really fulfilled all their needs to the navigation package. So what they did is creating a new package called Go Router. And this one is now maintained by the Flutter team directly and contains all the different things um, if you want to make complex routing like deep links and uh, URL routing and things like that. If you are still happy with Navigator 1.0, just ignore the whole thing. <laughs> All right, then there are VS Code extensions. Not so important for me, but I think you like that a lot. There is now the possibility to add dependencies directly from your uh, VS Code thing without any uh, package or something like that. There are different links. I will put them down in the video description. Feel free to read through them. Then the Flutter DevTools update. I really liked it. It has a lot of changes and a lot of upgrades and especially the jittering scrolling is now finally gone, which I really like. And it will make the DevTools not as much a secondary citizen, but a first class citizen. And I think that's very important because everyone knows the um, dev tools of the browser and we all want that for Dart and Flutter of course as well and I think these changes are necessary and will be much more sophisticated in the future and hopefully will add more people to the dev tool and will you make it a uh, good use of it. 
Great, then we have some performance improvements and I could read you all of that, but I think the first sentence is most important. Uh, loading of images of assets are now way faster. Uh, I think they talk at like doubles the micro benchmarks and we will quickly check the image. But what happens underneath the hood is the image provider now use an immutable buffer and there is not so many copy and pasting inside of the, <clears throat> uh, like creating copies inside of Dart then back into the native framework and things like that. So the image loading should be way faster. Great, yeah, the micro benchmark is dropped like nearly the half, which is pretty strong. And that's pretty cool to see. Yeah, then there was some uh, stability points and uh, the good old Yatsi found an issue that uh, with the com uh, pointer confirmation optimization, there is also the possibility to have some problems. And what they just write here is that they will have another look into the optimization and will check if it is really working as intended. Yeah, so if you want to catch all the errors, then you could be using the zone way and there is now an improved page or how to handle the errors in Flutter and that makes it pretty cool. Uh, fragment program changes. So this will be very interesting if you are like a flame developer, I guess, because now you can pass in the shaders more directly into the engine. And this makes it a little bit easier to work with these fragment programs. Pretty cool that this is now as a support. And I heard already in the live stream where I worked on the whole thing um, that this is something that people are really looking forward to. So I personally never had a touch point there, but I think if you want something very specific, it's pretty cool to have. Fractional uh, translations, I think it goes into a nearly the same thing. Some pixel pointing snapping mechanism, which made the performance on some iPhone models bad. They fixed it now, now it should be a bit more performant and improve also the fidelity of the desktop application. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 32 iOS deprecation. Well, with the newest version, now some devices getting out of date, like for example, iPhone 4S, iPhone 5, 5C, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, at one point you have to get rid of them, right? Then uh, macOS 10.11 and 10.12 getting not uh, were deprecated from Flutter uh, 3.3. Uh, in the Q4 stable, we expect to drop the support, yeah. Cool, then a uh, bitcode deprecation. And this one is with Xcode 14. So usually this should be per default deactivated, but if you have it activated, it could break now your app. So make sure that you have fixed that correctly because in the future Xcode version, this will not be possible anymore to build your apps with it. Cool, with all of that, that's already the updates for Flutter and Dart. Great, now jump over to zap.run. Yeah, and you mentioned it already, or I mentioned it already, this week was Flutter Vikings in Oslo and it was so good. So many great speakers and the best part was that the Flutter community was able and was allowed to stream the whole event in the internet. So all of these great talks, like for example, deep dive into Flutter theming from Mike Rydstrom Everything or here Riverpod 2.0 you can see directly online. There have been free rooms and there were technical difficulties. I'm very sorry for the whole uh, organizer team who created that uh, live stream. I think it was last minute. And what I can recommend already is the Flutter web in action. It was pretty cool for me to see how far we are already with the uh, web. Uh, in Flutter and also he announced things like Flutter Gen which I really like and he talked already about pre-caching and pre-loading of images and animations which seems to be very important. Very interesting talks all over the place so please check it out. Uh, two days fully fledged with a lot of people that I really love like uh, May or um, yeah Michael Hitzker and things like that. So really great people. I'm so sad that I was not able to join there, but I was there. I watched a lot of these talks. So feel free to also have a look and check out down in the video description, the YouTube links to all the different, uh, yeah, um, talks. If you are like me and you switched from a web background back to a Flutter, you probably know StackBlitz. StackBlitz is a web application that has a VS Code integration and has different projects as an example that you can then directly work in the browser and share with your team members and with your friends. And the cool thing about it, it was working all in the browser and you could directly work it. But now, well, we would not be the Flutter and Dart community if we would not create something much more powerful. So we have Zap. 
Zap is an application created by Intraverse and they created it where you can, well, work in a sandbox environment where you can have access to all the pub.dev packages, stata analyzing, embedding, previewing and much more. So you have the possibility to work in your browser, change things and directly see the result on the other side. So how can you imagine how that looks? Like for example, we have here hello world. And if I change that to flutter explained, I can press up here the play button and we get something from pub.get and on the right side, it's getting recreated code. It will take a second, but it builds everything. And afterwards you have that running in the browser. You can share that directly with a link. You can send an embedded code or you can send a project link and they will directly jump into this VS code part. It can create forks and things like that. So pretty cool. It's connected with GitHub and so on and so forth. But now you can also install different uh, versions here. You can update the package projects information and so on and so forth. And thanks to the whole embedded, you can also get all the packages inside of here. The best part is you also have IntelliSense. So everything that you need to know, uh, what you need to create your first couple of uh, yeah, applications. And last but not least, I want to talk about the Flutter Flame Game Jam. It was also, I think, two weeks now already ago, and uh, it was crazy. It was very interesting to see all the results and what it is. Well, the Flame Game Engine is a Flutter engine, and with that you can create games. Well, who thought it? right and yeah as you can see we had a lot of results and i want to quickly go over the five best uh, or the six best because we were six <laughs> but it was 23 entries really great games beasts and spikes very much deserved one uh widler fish otter was his name very great game split very interesting where you play with two players on the left and the right side and they are not allowed to go too far away had a very nice ending very beautiful one bit bounce uh, you very hard game but very interesting to play road cop was like a recreation of a razor uh, galoot uh, was a cat adventure game uh, also very interesting with colors and dystopia very uh, how do you call it uh, story driven and all of that has been done in two days and if you are interested we have been sixth place graviator great game <laughs> and thank you so much for all the support if you join in twitter you already seen that what we created there it was a great session i really enjoyed the two work and i had the joy to work with three additional people i learned a lot and i highly can recommend to try it out yourself and be part of the next flame game gem all right that's it with the flutter news of this week and i really want to know what was your most wanted feature that came into it was it flutter 3.3 or were you more interested in the games that we develop let me know down in the comments below thanks for watching until the next time you're max bye